you know something week after week every saturday when i sit over here and talk to you people i know that so many of you are there logged in listening uh, to me i can see the numbers also coming on the laptop at the bottom but you know i really feel as though i'm talking to myself because i'm one of those old timers who likes to see people's faces responses reactions expressions possibly smiles and when i don't get that that is one of the greatest grouses that i have against this covid 19 whatever else damage that covid 19 did it disconnected human beings from each other as contrasted to this i continue to have our monthly talk which we have named as chintan on the third thursday of every month at 10 o'clock whatever the number of people sometimes there's a hall full of people sometimes uh, you know there are very few but when i sit or stand and i look into the eyes of the people i get a completely different feeling than sitting over here staring at that white light on top of my laptop and imagining your expressions and what you must be saying or thinking or reacting and all that it really takes a lot of uh, thing i may be a behavioral scientist but i am not capable of guessing what must be going on in your minds without seeing your faces anyway that was just a thing to digress because i was thinking of that but the main topic that struck me was that how many of us actually do talk to ourselves and the interesting thing how many of us admit that we talk to ourselves even to admit that you know i talk to god or i talk to my guru who is no longer alive that we don't mind we don't think how foolish it is to talk to god or to a guru who is dead or something no but how many of us are willing to admit that we talk to ourselves very few it takes a lot of courage to be able to do uh, that isn't it in fact there was a very nice uh, joke about uh, a person who was considered to be you know insane lunatic suffering from mental uh, illness he used to go about telling people god talks to me god tells me to do this god tells me to do that and one day he said you people laugh at me no you say how can god talk to you what do you think of yourself why are you trying to be foolish but he said so many of you say we talk to god and nobody considers you foolish if i say i talk to god nobody thinks i'm foolish but if i said god talks to me i think i'm foolish reflect over it the same thing applies to talking to yourself whether you admit it or not barring maybe a very small percentage most of us used to talk to ourselves when we were children we used to enjoy talking to ourselves so many of us had what we call as imaginary friends so many of us had maybe a soft toy so many would look at a photo and talk to that uh, uh, photo that's as good as talking to yourself right because there nobody else who is listening Uh, to you not even the soft toy or whatever the imaginary friend and all that so in effect using different means we used to talk to ourselves and that is why majority of us did not feel lonely as children even if there were occasions when we were scolded by the parents or given time out or when nobody else was uh, uh, there anything like that we would escape into our own world of fantasy if mummy would scold saying that go and sit in your room i'm not going to give you any snacks you have not done your studies child would go and sit in the room look up at the roof and say 
supposing I cut a hole in that roof and I ask a helicopter to come above and let down a ladder through that hole, I'll climb that ladder, get into that helicopter, I'll tell the pilot to please fly me to Chennai where my favorite aunt is. I'll get down in her house and I'll say, please give me some nice snacks. And she loves me so much. She will immediately make the snacks and give it to me. I will enjoy those snacks. Again, climb up into the helicopter, come back to my house, come down the ladder, close the roof and sit down quietly as though I'm doing my homework. He never felt foolish or silly thinking that way. On the other hand, these were the things which gave so much of relief to us. Like I said, parent has shouted at me. It's a miserable thing now. The child's life revolves around the parent. There's so much of guilt. There's so much of sadness. There's so much of isolation. But just this concept of being able to talk to yourself in whatever form, either you talk to yourself or you talk to your uh, software, talking to a pet, for example, Yes, of course, pets are living beings and they do respond in so many ways. But non-living beings also, as I said, talking to a photo, talking to God, talking to whatever your soft toy or talking to an imaginary friend. They all come under the same category. Once in a while, a child actually gets caught. He is mumbling, 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 something sitting alone. And some elder walks in and says, what are you doing? Who, who are you talking to? There's nobody here. What's gone wrong with you? Why are you mumbling away when nobody is there to listen uh, to you? You keep doing that, you'll end up in a lunatic asylum. When that is told, the child gets shocked. The child says, oh, this is wrong, is it? I didn't realize uh, uh, it. I didn't know that I'm not uh, uh, supposed to be doing uh, uh, this. And that is when things start changing. I just collected a few you know, interesting slides and I'm requesting Sonal to show you the first one. Here, the Tweety Bird, she is really my favorite. She's saying, no, I'm not talking to myself because I'm crazy. I'm talking to myself because it's the only intelligent conversation I can get around here sometimes, isn't it? So naive, so innocent, but it is a fact. No? There are times when you are surrounded by uh, people and you find that nobody has anything intellectual or stimulating to talk to you. What do you do? If you're a child or if you're a childlike person, you start talking to yourself. It's not difficult at all. So that is what I was just saying that can we think in terms of, you know, acknowledging and admitting that there is nothing wrong in being childlike. And remember, I've been telling you this earlier also, there's a lot of difference between being childlike and childish. The adults who take themselves for granted, although, you know, they are all great and omnipotent and they are very important. And the way they behave with everybody else, I will say, these are the people who are childish. A person who is very innocent, very simple, very naive. Person who means no harm to anybody else. The person does small, small things gets joy out of the bare minimum things of uh, life. That person is childlike and not childish. There's a world's difference. Please reflect over it when you have the time. Now, a childlike person is a person who has not allowed what we call as the inner child to die. As long as your inner child is alive and kicking, life will always be exciting, simple, joyous. You may go through many ups and downs. So many bad things may happen to you. But if your inner child is still alive and active, your inner child will take you away from that trauma or those challenges and give you 
some relief in a world where you know nothing matters and that is why i told you that if you are a person who has given up talking to yourself as you grew up because somebody you know pointed it out to you somebody laughed at uh, you or you yourself became very self conscious that no 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 i am now grown up if i do this people will think bad so you suppressed that desire and you were not talking at all to yourself you have given up on your best friend you have given up on the opportunity to talk interact listen argue enjoy with one person who is available to you 24 by 7 and the one person who is not judgmental and who does not criticize or put you down if you still do talk to yourself then ask yourself do you feel ashamed do you feel it is silly i don't think so i genuinely mean it and this includes if somebody points fingers at you somebody laughs at you please understand that they are the foolish ones they are the childish ones who have not been able to understand what it means to be child like a person who can talk to oneself enjoy his or her own company will never ever be a lonely will never feel isolated even if a hundred people let you down that is something i want you to please keep in mind just to reinforce that here is a second slide which sonal will show you just now donald duck again one of my favorites he says it's okay to talk to yourself it's even okay to answer yourself but when you ask yourself to repeat what you just said you have a problem what does this mean there are times when you meet up somebody who is sitting alone and mumbling or doing something on his own or seems to be lost in thought and you ask that person what were you doing no i was just uh, you know introspecting i was just visualizing i was just uh, trying to think deeper etc etc okay so what were you thinking about and the person says i don't remember that shows that the person is using this self talk only as an escape it's like you go to a friend and say that you know i have something serious to talk to you and then you go on jabbering away without even knowing what you are saying just because that friend is available to listen to you you're not serving any purpose you have to be listening to yourself when you talk and that only happens if you overcome this guilt or this feeling of inadequacy or feeling embarrassed that what will people think i am so old and yet i am talking to myself like a child when you do that you will find that you yourself are a person who is you know content and happy with your own self another aspect of you know talking to yourself starts off with storytelling if you are listening to or reading a good story it's almost like you're talking to yourself just try and recollect when you had these simple you know bedtime stories or uh, uh, little little things which uh, uh, you know being uh, told to you or read by you and all these uh, uh, things you were actually introspecting and you were thinking of yourself most children you must be aware of course most children when they read about this knight in shining armor or this beautiful princess they actually put themselves in that role for a few minutes they start visualizing that i am that person and while not many adults will 
acknowledge when we grow up and we start watching these bollywood sandalwood movies where there's this great hero or this beautiful heroine or whatever we actually virtually put ourselves in the shoes of that person and we start fantasizing believing that this is what i am and in that process we are talking to ourselves how do i get rid of the enemy or the villain how do i bring happiness and joy and justice in this uh, world that is what we start to, uh, doing so even storytelling is a good way to talk to yourself take a children's story book or take those light and uh, you know small uh, uh, short story books something like that chicken soup for the soul or this akbar birbal uh, stories pick up any of those preferably one which has got some graphics and some drawings in it like how a fascinated child would read open it and read one page and stop and start talking you to yourself what this person was doing is it right could it have been done in a separate uh, uh, way how do i go about doing this ah let me continue then you move on to the next paragraph and that believe me does not happen with the audio visual things like tv and netflix and all that because they captivate your attention so much they don't allow you to think you are staring at that screen not willing to look away even for a few seconds because you will miss some important dialogue or scene and the more successful <clears throat> a drama or a video or a movie is the faster it runs it has got action every few seconds to ensure that your mind does not drift away or you don't start thinking for yourself that is one of the reasons why i have always stuck to and i always believe that reading books is a far superior activity than watching the screen i have not been able to convince many people but i will continue to keep trying because this is something which is proven over the ages and which i have experienced personally for years and decades i also have the same facilities as you people have a big tv Uh, screen at uh, home the laptop the connection to netflix and whatever you want to call it but barring a few minutes here and there now and then and i'm just sitting down and waiting for dinner or something and i switch on the tv barring that i don't really feel uh, connected but i go and sit down in my bedroom and i start reading a good book i am totally absorbed in it and that is what i wanted to you know tell similarly we have now become addicted to things like google and now recently what is that chat gbt or alexa yesterday i was speaking to our group of children who are here with us for the summer camp called youngs 20 22 boisterous and active and happy children from 9 10 years of age to 20 years of uh, age different mental levels and one of the things when i was interacting with them and i asked when you have a doubt or you know when you need to do something and your teacher is not available or somebody else is not uh, available whom would you go to nobody said mother or father but many of them raised their hand immediately and said alexa google now this is something that i want to caution you google has answers to everything but you have to ask the right questions and that you can do only if you have a thinking mind of your own just have a look at this one more cartoon sonal is showing you what this man did is he found his broken cell phone 
and when he is in public and he wants to talk to himself, he holds that phone as though he is talking to somebody and he carries out a beautiful conversation and obviously nobody comments. So this cell phone has become so acceptable, but talking to oneself is not acceptable. And similarly, the cell phone, you know, uh, connects you to people whom you don't even want to meet personally. And yet you are very happy, you know, interacting through the cell phone, becoming part of uh, WhatsApp groups. And then there will be some 50 messages in a day in each uh, uh, group. And you will wonder how to keep sorting them out or eliminating them. All of that we continue to do. In fact, every now and then it happens that I hear somebody saying something and looking in my direction. And I'm about to respond when I realize that he's either got the phone stuck to his ear or his phone in his, is in his packet, pocket and the ear plugs are in his ear and he's talking to somebody else. He's just, you know, sort of uh, vaguely looking in my direction, but he's not connecting to me at all. And that is what happens if you get you know, become a slave to technology. I keep reminding you, technology can be a wonderful slave, but a horrible master. Instead of getting up in the morning and first thing checking your WhatsApp and your messages and this and that, go and sit somewhere quietly, preferably in nature, when you can look out at the greenery and the sovereignty and the calmness, maybe the sky or the clouds or whatever it is, and start thinking. Start thinking aloud. Start talking to yourself. Tell whoever is around in the house that don't disturb me when I'm talking to myself. I'm having an important meeting with myself. Use that as a means to think. Spend some time with you know yourself. And if you can do that in third person, that's even better. I think I had mentioned this uh, anecdote to you. There was a father who had brought his toddler to the park where there were so many other children, adults and all these. But this child was so naughty that he was jumping up and down, pulling out plants here and there, pushing somebody. And the father was going behind uh, him. Instead of shouting, he was saying, no, Ravi, we should not lose temper, Ravi. We should not get boisterous, Ravi. We should not get violent, Ravi. No, Ravi, don't do that, Ravi. Be calm, Ravi. Have control over your emotions and your anger, Ravi. People who were watching, they were quite surprised. They said, your kid is misbehaving so badly and you're not losing your temper on him. You're talking to him so softly and so gently and so lovingly. The father said, Ravi is not his name. Ravi is my name. I'm talking to myself so that I resist the temptation of shouting or hitting my child. See the advantages of doing that. And that's why I said that when you talk in third person, it becomes easier for you because we are so used to talking to others and not used to talking to oneself, right? So that this is also one way by you, way you get the thing. There's another advantage of uh, uh, self-talk, which you can ask some expert psychologists. Long, long, long back, there was this world boxing champion, Cassius Clay, who renamed himself as Muhammad Ali. This I'm talking about almost maybe 60 years back. He was a living legend. Nobody had been the world boxing heavyweight champion for as many years as him. But he had one bad habit, which people used to get very irritated with. Whether anybody is listening or not, he would say, I am the greatest. I am the champion. I will win all my matches. I can beat anybody is to keep making statements like that. And people used to feel a little awkward. They used to say, everybody knows that you are the world champion. 
you got that award and that status. Why do you have to keep repeating it? Why do you have to boast like that? And the answer was that he was not actually boasting. He was giving himself that positive strokes, the reinforcers. The more he kept repeating that to himself, the more his confidence level and his motivation went up. Later on, psychologists started tell, training their wards who are going for some championships to keep repeating to themselves the way Muhammad Ali used to do. Saying that, I will win this competition. I am the fastest runner. I am the best person. I will do this and I will do that. See, some of the advantages of all these, uh, uh, you know, self-talks as we call it. Whenever it is possible, keep uh, giving yourself what we call as this affirmation. That's exactly what in a different way Muhammad Ali used to do. That if you give yourself affirmation, supposing you have a doubt, am I doing the right thing? Will I pass this exam? Will I be able to convince this person about whatever I want to do? Before coming to that point of the exam or the interaction or whatever you are doing, spend a few minutes giving yourself affirmations, positive strokes, talking to yourself and saying, yes, I am capable of convincing the person. I have good data with me by which I can present and show that person. I have studied so well, I will definitely do well in the exam. These affirmations go a long way in bringing about better results. You can see the last cartoon that uh, you know I found very, very funny as well as interesting. There is this cartoon character saying, of course, I talk to myself. Sometimes I need expert advice. Isn't it true? If you stop, think, have carry out that dialogue within you, it is like, you know, taking expert advice from somebody. Because your brain is there, your mind is there, your capabilities are there. All you need to do is to slow down and start thinking. In fact, there is some surveys and research to show that self-talk also increases your short-term memory. Some people, you know, we, many of us rather, have this problem with the short-term memory. I forgot what I was doing just now. I forgot that uh, address which I had. And all these things are getting more and more aggravated because of tech technology. When Google can show us the directions, I don't even want to remember or memorize or write down the directions. I just put on that Google Maps or whatever it is and Google tells me where to turn. After 500 meters, take a right turn. So your mind goes numb and it is the artificial intelligence, uh, you know, uh, taking over. Yes, Gayatri has asked, is journaling better than self-talk? No, there's no such thing as better or uh, worse. You feel like talking, you talk. You feel like writing, you write. You feel like dictating to your uh, uh, you know, mobile phone. Whatever you feel like doing. The methodology is not important. The significance is that do you interact with, uh, you know, uh, with yourself. Only in extreme cases, if you lose touch with reality, you lose touch with people, you're all the time mumbling and talking only to yourself, you're lost in a world. That is when we need to pay attention to what is uh, uh, happening. But that happens very rarely and only in extreme cases. Maybe you can ask one or two close friends to caution you or warn you if such a thing uh, uh, happens. But barring such uh, unforeseen circumstance or something, most of the time it is 100% safe. It does not in any way cause any harm. On the other hand, it has a number of benefits which I have listed out to you. And I can continue to list out so many other benefits which I can sit the whole day and talk about the benefits. But I don't want to do that. I want you to talk to yourself, take expert advice from yourself and continue this dialogue within yourself. Okay. So right now, I'm just going to take 
my quick one minute break. Sonal has come all the way despite the fact that it's a holiday and she's organized this program. So she'll just update you quickly on what's happening in Banjara and I'll be back and we'll continue with your questions, comments and whatever doubts that you have. Good morning, good Saturday morning, right? We are in that holiday mood and it's nice to listen something which is like you can do it by yourself, but you don't need anybody's company. As Ali was talking, I was just thinking which is the best time to do self-talk? Morning walks, right? When you see beautiful sky, you see beautiful green trees, look at the sky, it gives you so much of feeling of abundance. There's so much in this world for everyone. And that greenery gives that fresh feel. Oh my God, if you can keep appreciating nature, it will be a wonderful self-talk, right? And as Ali was talking about affirmations also, I felt whenever we are on that uh, moment where we are not able to think what next, there's some kind of anxiety, there's some kind of fear, I don't know what's going to happen. Those are the times also I think self-talk can help you quite a bit to calm down and then think rationally, what steps can I take to deal with the feeling that I am having? Yeah. Such are the things we teach in Young's and Blossoms. How to deal with the moments which you think, which you think rather, okay, that you cannot do it or you don't know how to do it. Isn't it amazing if children can learn from now how to deal with their own emotions? Identify their emotions first and then deal with their emotions. Be self-aware, work in a team, work by yourself, develop interpersonal skills with empathy. It's very important that, you know, when you are in a group of people, you understand others while understanding yourself. That's where you will develop that empathy and sensitivity before taking any steps forward to deal a specific situation. Families also we encounter. Joint families, people learn with time because two people are talking, other few are just observing. They learn through that. But nuclear families, imagine one child with two adults around. It's like having two CCTV cameras. Sorry for that, but I feel so. If it's one child and two parents all the time around, each one has something to say that this is what you're doing is not right. Sit properly, eat properly, sleep properly. Isn't it? So much they have to listen. That child definitely needs a lot of self-talk. And if he goes to a room and does that, he will be knocking. What are you doing inside? Leave the door open. <laughs> oh my God. Just try and reflect these things. We all have done and we all will be doing also. But think, is it required? Or can we have a conversation about the fear that you are having or the thought of fear that you are having? That I am scared if this happens. The child will answer you. And child may not know a true answer for that, but he can definitely, you know, keep that in mind so that when that situation comes, he will remember that my parents told that and that was their concern. Speak out of concern, not out of authority. I'm telling you, don't question me, just do what I'm saying is out of authority. But if you say, hey, I'm really scared that, you know, if you lock the door and by chance, if something happens and if it doesn't open, what would you do all alone? When you say this, child will think he may find a way out of it or may even acknowledge and stop locking the door. But let the child shut the door, no? Let the child have that time of self-talk. I'm talking more from the child's angle because this is vacation again. And these are 
things that are going to happen. So small, small tips, I felt, which fits in self-talk. Let me just talk to you. And to tell you on 29th, the next Saturday, Ali is not going to do Facebook because he wants a holiday. He wants a break from every Saturday routine. But the other next Saturday, he is going to do a Facebook uh, talk, which will be um, principles and values, practicing values and principles. Yes, I'm doing self-talk looking at the screen. It is pr practicing values and principles. Yeah. Um, OK, good number of questions. I'm glad you people are engaging yourself. The more you engage yourself, speak your mind. That's where you will get an expert advice. When you do self-talk and you're not able to get few things uh, clear to yourself, it's good to get self uh, uh, advice from an expert. And who other than Ali? That's the best advice that we can get. And we should make the most out of it. Ali, can we have you back? Yes. So I have said whatever I wanted to say. Now more than me doing one way talk and self talk. Let me talk to you. Rupali says the challenge is that even after affirmations and hard work, if results are not desirable, how to handle the situation? Affirmations do not get results, Rupali. Affirmations only make you feel a little more confident, a little more motivated, a little more positive. Your efforts get you results. So if I just keep giving myself affirmation saying I am the greatest uh, you know, world champion, boxer, heavyweight champion or whatever it is, but I don't practice, I don't build up my skills, nothing is going to happen. So this, that is the affirmations are a tool which enhances your you know, performance. Roshan says, oh no, Rina says, I am so fond of music that it plays in my mind all the time. Yes, this is another thing which we do. Good, you reminded me, uh, Rina. Many of us, you know, keep playing once we hear some good song and this and that. I heard one of the very nostalgic songs uh, this morning when I put on the radio for the first time. I'm still a radio buff, by the way. So when I put on that uh, radio and I heard an old Kishore Kumar song. It kept playing in my mind for a very, very long uh, uh, time. Sometimes it plays for days. And that, again, is a different form of self-talk. Uh, uh, this particular song, if you see the meaning of the words in it, it is Kishore Kumar's song. I don't remember the movie as usual. It is, uh, uh, you know, Jeevan ke din chote sahi hum hai bade dil wale. Kal ki hume kisko khabar? Aaj hum Just think of those words, you know, they sort of ring inside uh, you. Ah, Surekha says, without monitoring our mind and mouth, the majority of what we say to ourselves can poison our attitude, weaken our spirit and drain our energy. Yes, Surekha, good you brought up this thing. Some of us, what we do is, comes in the category of brooding. So if something bad has happened or I'm anxious that something bad will happen, I keep reinforcing in the negative way. I don't think I can do that. I will be making a fool of myself. I will never pass. I will not be able to do this or uh, that. I am stupid. Why did I make that mistake yesterday? Why did I do something bad? Now, that is what poisons our attitude, weakens our spirit and drains our energy. Please be aware of it. It's good that Surika brought this up to our you know, thought process that let your thoughts and let your conversation do not become so bad that you become your own self-critic. Akila says, I agree. 
when I write my diary, poem or story, a lot of self-talk happens. Listening to songs or music, enjoying my solo journey also. I have a lot of interaction within myself. And that is what has made Akila into a wonderful poet. I have seen a book of poems where she has written such a lovely, simple poem about a teacher. A small thing. But how did uh, you know a person like Akila or any of you, how do you come out with something go good? It only happens if you are talking to yourself. If you are questioning yourself, what should I write on? How should I write? What should I mention over here? What are my impressions? What have been my experiences? You put all that together and a beautiful poem, a beautiful story can come out of the uh, thing. And even if you're not a great writer, it doesn't matter. It's good enough that you are doing that self-talk and pushing yourself up. Who is the next? Roshan says, is self-talk similar to inner voice? My inner voice is extremely powerful and I truly believe in it and not the advice of society or this uh, world. Exactly, Roshan. Inner voice is yours, part of your self-talk. The more you encourage self-talk, the more you get used to it and the more you make a part of it, this inner voice comes in and the inner voice also has a lot of gut feeling, instincts, sixth sense as they call, call it, intuition. And that also grows the more you do self-talk. These things which not everybody uh, you know, acknowledges, some people even ridicule what is this thing called intuition. Go by cold logic and all that. But these are the things where your inner voice, your intuition is actually nurtured by your continuously talking to yourself and listening to yourself. Uh, Karthik says, self-talk is a way of changing introvertness and improve lack of communication skills. Yes, Karthik, I agree, but with one small rider. I told you also before the break, my self-talk should not be so much that I withdraw from society and I talk only to myself. It's like you have a very good friend and you decide I don't need any more friends. Whenever I need to talk, I will talk only to this one friend. You are putting all your eggs in one basket. So the same way as it is not advisable to do it with a friend or a third person, you should not do it with yourself also. Keeping that in mind, you can definitely improve your communication skills, as Karthik has rightly said. Ah, Navina says self-talk, I think, helps in the following. Number one, it helps to be self-aware and release our emotions. Yes, Navina, that's a very good thing that you have brought out. It releases your emotions. As you keep talking to yourself, you start feeling lighter. Second point, what she says is, when we pat our own back after self-talk, we, we activate our left and right brain. That's right. That's why this affirmations... And, you know, compliments, giving yourself positive uh, strokes go a very long way. Yes, I am good. I can do this. I am a nice human being. I have compassion. I have love. I know how to connect to people. I want to reach out and build good relationships. All this comes under this. The third one, which Navina says, is our frustration and hurt minimizes and we are better able to manage our emotion. Yes. Provided you do not brood over those uh, frustrations and hurts. That is the only word of caution that I give in self-talk. Do not get so involved in the negativity that you actually get pulled down by your self-talk. As long as you take that precaution, you are on the right track. Zina says, I have been self-talking since childhood. Most of my family members do too. I confront self too if I make any mistake. That's a very nice uh, uh, thing. Why not confront oneself? Sometimes it's good to give constructive criticism to yourself. Hey, why did I lose my temper when I was talking to so-and-so yesterday? Did I do the right thing? 
could I have done it in a different way? How do I think I can control my uh, temper better? Do you think it's necessary for me to apologize to that person even though one day has gone past? All this self-talk helps you to rationalize and correct so many of your mistakes and start thinking on a wider footing. That's another advantage. Surekha says, why do we obsess about the things we deplore rather than love uh, about ourselves? Yes, Surekha, that's a very unfortunate thing. Somewhere along the line, we have got so tuned into focusing on the negative. Out of 10 people I interact with, 9 have been good to me. One person got into an argument with me. My thought keeps going back again and again and again to that person. And as I said, we can even land up brooding. Why did that person do this to me? Why was this person rude to me? Why did he shout at uh, me? You won't get the answer. You can talk to yourself a hundred times, you will not get the answer. But if you say, yes, I think something has gone wrong between him and me. I'm not blaming anybody. But somehow this relationship is not going well. We had this you know, very negative uh, uh, interaction and things are a little unpleasant. But I now recollect yesterday I also met XYZ and each one of them was so nice to me. It was such a pleasant uh, thing. I think I should spend more time with uh, uh, them. So you have to continuously keep practicing, you know, till you move your mind away from those negative things which you deplore and talking more about things where there is blossoming of good communication, love, understanding and all these things. Asha says, doesn't too much of self-talk keep things to oneself and stop a person from exploring and finding alternate answers as the rational mind goes for a toss? Yes, Asha. I have already cautioned that too much of self-talk, like too much of anything, even too much of food can uh, destroy you, isn't it? Whereas food is an essential part of your sustenance and survival. But too much of food can be bad. Too much of money can be bad. Too much of whatever can be bad the same way. Too much of self-talk, doing only self-talk and not talking to others, doing self-talk only on negative uh, things and brooding. These are all things which can cause uh, problem. But just because that possibility is there, we should not stop the self-talk. No. We should continue with the thing. Only do a little bit of course correction, as we say. Yeah, yesterday I think I was a little brooding. I was thinking only of that fight that I had or that something negative that happened. I think I need to start thinking towards better uh, things. You can control your thoughts. It's not very difficult. Practice. Surekha says, boredom causes the mind to overthink. People are less depressed and happier when kept busy. Yes, but again, Surekha, it works both ways. Sometimes people, the type A personalities, become so busy, they are running away from something. They become workaholics. They think only when I keep on performing, it starts with children who want to get 100 out of 100 in the exams, going on to people who want to achieve the fastest and quickest and highest. That is what we should be careful about when we say kept busy. So there is this thing called work-life balance. Do your work, be busy doing whatever your responsibilities. You may be a homemaker, you may be working in an office, whatever you are uh, uh, doing. But at the same time, balance it with solitude, spending time with yourself, enjoying your own company, maybe even pampering yourself. So as you sit alone and you are thinking and you say, hey, the weather is really bad last few days. It's been so hot. I love that particular ice cream which is made by some such brand and it's not too far from here. When it gets a little cooler this evening, why don't I just walk down and treat myself to an ice cream? I don't need anybody's company. And I keep talking to myself as I go there. I keep thanking myself that I gave myself an ice cream, etc. Nitya says, when we are hurt and upset due to people around and resort to self-talk, there will be a relief, but that will not solve the issue unless we communicate to the other people involved. 
So in these scenarios, isn't it better to communicate to others? Yes, Nitya, I agree with you. I'm a strong believer that when you have an unpleasantness, when you have a misunderstanding, you should always communicate. But you know where self-talk comes in and how it helps? The self-talks helps you to think about what you are going to say. Otherwise, in my hurry and in my impulsiveness, when I go to set right the things or to, you know, clarify, I may actually make it worse. But when I do self-talk, what exactly happened yesterday? I had this argument with Mr. A or Ms. B. What was my fault in it? To this extent, I think I was responsible. So what can I do about it? Which is the best method to, you know, uh, set things right? Should I send a message? Should I talk to that person on phone? Should I go across with a little gift and talk to that person? Your self-talk helps you to take care of all these things. Ah, Roshan says, today being Eid, I would love to eat Sir Khurma. Being childlike, I love to eat sweets. My best friend has gone to Dubai, so I have to wait till she gives my favorite dish. Childlike feelings always keep me always young. Exactly. That is what I said, that when we were children, we used to do a lot of self-talk, and that used to keep us happy and bubbly and lively. As we grew older, we started taking ourselves too seriously. So this is where this whole concept you know, comes in. Incidentally, there are a lot of messages wishing for Eid and Akshay Tritya and all these things. I think I must thank all of you collectively because I can't waste up others' times by thanking you personally. But I really feel very nice to see so many greeting. I've been getting messages since morning also. And right now also in the chat box, I saw some of the messages where people are greeting for the festivals. I believe and I celebrate all festivals because every festival either gets me Shir Korma or gets me something uh, worthwhile. So that's it. I enjoy all the festivals and I reciprocate the good wishes that uh, you have been giving me. Sanjay says, uh, wondering how do we inculcate self-talk in children? One way, of course, is parents practice the same. Any thoughts? Yes, Sanjay. One is practice. Sit down when the child is playing in the same room and start talking to yourself loudly. Child says, what are you, what are you saying? <laughs> no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to myself. Why are you talking to yourself? You know, sometimes I feel nice. I enjoy my own company and solitude. You're busy playing with your toys. No, you play. I'll talk to myself. After I finish with my talking, maybe I'll come and play with you or you come and sit with me. We'll have a chat. So you become a role model. Second thing to remember is children actually do not need that inculcation. All we need to do is to not show a child that it is silly and it is childish and all that. Not put a child down when that child is doing you know, self-talk. Uh, uh, I knew of a child who was a very fond cricketer. So what he used to do was he had a small backyard and he used to play cricket with himself. He used to bowl. He used to uh, throw the ball and uh, you know become the batsman. He used to do all that. But he used to give himself a running commentary. And he used to go on saying, now Ashish has come to bowl and Ashish will do a wonderful job and Ashish is a pace bowler and Ashish has already taken so many wickets. Now Ashish has come to bat and Ashish will do this. You know what happened? His parents started laughing at him. They started telling other visitors that you know what this stupid fellow does. He gives a running commentary and he keeps praising himself. It had such a bad effect on the child. His self-esteem came down. One is he gave up cricket completely and even his academics came down. These are the things which we need to keep in mind when we are dealing with children. Surekha says, what do we do when negative self-talk becomes compulsive and we just can't get out of this stampede? There are so many ways, Surekha, I have discussed with you personally also. One of those things which uh, you know I mentioned, thought stopping. The other is to you know, direct my mind from one side uh, to another. That yes, I have this negative uh, uh, self-talk about these negative. 
can I maybe take a piece of paper, draw a vertical line halfway uh, in between and first write down all the negative things that have happened to me, which I've been brooding and talking to. But I will also fill up the right side, which is the good thing that have happened to me and cherish those small uh, things. If a shopkeeper in the neighborhood has been nice to you, if your security person has been very kind and has done you a small gesture, start with self-talk and say, I like this man. This Dumar Singh, even being a poor man and being a person from so far away, takes so much interest in us and does these things. And I understand, I remember how yesterday evening when I came back from shopping, I had so many bags in my hand. He voluntarily came forward and took away one or two bags and brought them near the lift and kept them uh, for me. So you first do the cell talk and then go and tell him that I appreciate this. <coughs> so what happens is that negative cell talk, which is slowly becoming compulsive, changes. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes patience. But it can be done. Ha. Madhvi says, self-talk helped me to apologize myself if I would have hurt somebody badly. I sl slap myself. Stop that. You don't going to do it again. If somebody asks me, you're not bored of living alone, I tell them 24 hours is less to me. I think we should congratulate her if she has got that rationality, that you know, wide thinking, that broad-mindedness, even to, I, mean, I, I hope she's not uh, uh, physically slapping herself, but yes, you can mentally slap yourself and say, I'm not going to do this wrong thing again. I have hurt somebody. Maybe my intention was good, but or I felt jealous or whatever it is, I've done it, but now I'm not going to do it. So again, we use that self-talk to correct ourselves. Gayatri says, when it comes to ice cream, I know that it's my inner child talking. Yes, Gayatri, start thinking, which are the flavors that you like? Which are the brands that you like? Do you enjoy eating alone or do you enjoy eating with some friend or some group or whatever uh, it is? When would you like to treat yourself to an ice cream? A simple thing like I'm a homemaker and I've been working for so many hours, I've cleaned up this room. I think I deserve an ice cream. Set that target. Keep talking to yourself. I know it is boring, dusting, cleaning, all these things. The way everybody has messed up this room is going to take me two, three hours to do it. But the moment I do that and I make a success of it, I am going to go to such and such ice cream shop and eat this ice cream, which I enjoy. These really make a difference. Okay. We are coming to the end of the hour. Asha says, how many of us are really aware of our inner voice? I find the inner voice is so subtle that it may come and be gone and we fail to recognize it. If a person is on constant self-chatting, make that inner voice part of your chatting. The moment that inner voice comes, stop that you know frivolous self-chatting that you are doing and move into evaluating giving attention to that inner voice. Yes, there's something which is telling me this is what I should do or something which is cautioning me. So I will start thinking in that direction. Pull that inner voice into your self-chatting. It can be done. So with that, we had a lovely... Uh, this. Ha, ah, Nita is asking, how is self-talk done? In any way possible, Nita. I even told you, some people like to write it down rather than, you know, talking. Some people do it softly. Some people do it loudly. You find your own way which uh, you know, suits you. Chaya says, how do we ensure that we are not justifying our actions or beating up ourselves while introspecting? That you can take an opinion from a second person now and then, every now and then, that this is what has happened. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I should change or whatever it is? Keep doing uh, that and you will be able to slowly, slowly come to some rationality and some understanding. So as uh, Sonal told you, next Saturday, that is the 29th of April, I'm going to take a break. I will not be with uh, you. I am in a, uh, you know, a conference the whole day. It's a very important uh, uh, one. So I will not be able to miss that and have this. Very rarely I take a break. This is one of uh, uh, them. So enjoy yourself next Saturday. And the Saturday after uh, that, that is on 6th May, 
we are going to be talking about values and principles. I just wanted to emphasize here that I believe there are values of being and values of giving. The values that help other people are what I define as values of giving. I'm going to be talking about that, how you can practice, build and sharpen those values, which can create better harmony and better relationships. So until then, have a wonderful time. If it's too hot, go and have an ice cream and we shall meet on 6th of May. Bye bye.